May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Who would have expected to see me preaching in Wakefield Church to so attentive a congregation a few years ago, when all the people were as roaring lions, and my honest host did not dare to let me preach in his yard, lest the mob should pull down his house. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, was used to violent and unfriendly receptions whenever and wherever he preached, not least from his fellow Church of England clergy. So as that journal entry for April 1752 makes clear, Wesley's respectful reception in this very church at the invitation of one of my predecessors, Benjamin Wilson, was an unexpected experience for him. It seems that the citizens of Wakefield had repented of their previous hostility, perhaps to demonstrate the superiority of their manners to those of their neighbours up the road in Leeds. That's very gratifying, but I haven't got to the punchline yet. <laughs> After he preached there, Wesley writes, the mob pelted us with dirt and stones a great part of the way home. We've just listened in the Bible to two more unexpected experiences, those of Jacob and Nathaniel. We meet Jacob in our Old Testament reading while he is on the run. He has tricked his elderly father Isaac into giving him the rights and the paternal blessing due to the firstborn Esau, his older brother. Esau is out for revenge, and Jacob's mother Rebekah urges him to flee east to relatives in Haran for his own safety. Asleep in the open, Jacob has a dream of a ladder joining earth and heaven, of angels ascending and descending on the ladder, and of God standing alongside him. Jacob is physically vulnerable to the dangers and the cold of a desert night, and morally vulnerable because of the deceitful way he has behaved towards his father and his brother. Yet in Jacob's dream, God speaks words not of rebuke, but of blessing. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Unexpected words for the fearful fugitive which prompt Jacob, when he wakes up, to describe his lonely sleeping place as none other than the house of God and the gate of heaven. In our New Testament reading, Nathaniel's unexpected experience arises out of Philip's invitation to meet a stranger from Nazareth who has impressed him greatly. Nathaniel doesn't seem disposed to expect very much. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Is his initial and rather rude reaction. But Nathaniel's scepticism and low expectations soon give way to a moment of awe and wonder, very similar to Jacob's, as he says to Jesus, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And there is more unexpectedness to come. Jesus affirms Nathaniel's declaration about his divine status with a twist on the story of Jacob's lover, which must have been very startling to his Jewish contemporaries. 
Jesus tells Nathanael that he will see angels ascending and descending not on a ladder, but on the Son of Man, a title which refers to Jesus himself. So in the Galilean countryside, Jesus gives Nathanael an intimation, a preview of the final reconciliation between God and human beings, earth and heaven joined through the cross and resurrection. These experiences of John Wesley, Jacob and Nathaniel are all in one way or another tales of the unexpected. An unexpected welcome from a Church of England minister and congregation for an itinerant and suspiciously enthusiastic preacher. An unexpected blessing at a moment of deep vulnerability for a cheat and a liar. An unexpected flash of insight from an initially rather uninterested onlooker. The beginning of any new ministry rightly brings with it a sense of godly anticipation and a whole range of hopes and expectations. That is the case both for ministers and for the communities which they will be joining and in whose ministry they are privileged to share. It is certainly true for me as I begin my ministry in Wakefield and I hope that it is true for all of you here this afternoon. Your presence is wonderfully inspiring testament to an underlying commitment to the common good, which I know is to be found in this cathedral, city, district, diocese, and beyond. But that common good does not come to us fully formed. It is a work of shared endeavour, requiring us always to be attentive to the unexpected insights of those from whom we might least expect them. So as I reflect on the scriptures we have heard this afternoon, I have one hope of all for what is to come in this next season of ministry at Wakefield Cathedral. It is that, together, we may eagerly expect the unexpected, that we may be open to and changed by the unexpected people and ways in which God reveals himself. The God who blessed Jacob in the harsh night of a Near Eastern desert and who affirmed the faith of an initially sceptical Nathaniel in Galilee is just as surely to be found among the vulnerable inmates of Wakefield Prison and Weatherby Young Offenders Institute, or the busy commons of Trinity Leeds and Broadway Bradford, among the ruthlessly exploited sex workers on the fringes of our inner urban areas and the youngsters in our countryside, exploited by county lines, drug gangs. Fran Rossi Spilzer, a parish worker in New York City, puts it like this in one of her blog posts. It is easy to see God in the hushed and majestic sanctuary when I am kneeling and praying alone. God is indeed there. God is everywhere. However, I continue to be startled by God revealed in people that irk me. God astonishingly and often unexpectedly shows up in everyone challenging my not-so-merciful, sometimes even hard heart, to soften 
and open. Just like God does for us every day. Friends, may the ministry of this cathedral church, of this diocese, and of all God's people be characterised by hearts that are softened and open to God's love shown to us in his crucified Son, Jesus Christ. May that love, in turn, strengthen us to lead lives of service to others that are generously open to the unexpected people and places where the risen Christ is to be found. And through such service, may we learn to rejoice in the continual presence among us of the ascended and glorified Christ, to whom with the Father and the Holy Spirit be unending praise, now and to the ages of ages. Amen.